Hey everybody, it's Brandon, The Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And when you do that, that means you're going to go to two main places, especially if you travel with Royal Caribbean. That is going to be Royal Caribbean's private island of Coco Cay. And you're also going to go to Nassau, Bahamas every weekend. Now, I personally think Nassau gets a little bit of a bad rap. People get there and they can't really figure out what it is they want to do. And so I wanted to share my walking tour with you on some of the highlights of downtown NASA. Now this is a cheap tour that you can self guide yourself. So I'm gonna give you steps on where to go, how to get there, um, but it's a super easy process. It's gonna take a while. So you wanna number one, make sure that you have on good walking shoes. There are steps involved. The sidewalks in NASA are not the best in the world. So you wanna have good shoes on. You're going to want to take sunscreen because you will be out in the elements, especially if it's summertime. It's going to be really hot walking around in July and August. You're going to want to have some water with you. You're going to want to have cash for tips. I'd say dollar bills or five dollar bills. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that you kind of know about where you're going. So look at a map before you get off the ship. See what the locations is. Follow my instructions and you're going to have a wonderful time seeing some of the highlights of downtown Nassau. Now to start with, you're going to go over to the Queen's Staircase. Now when you walk off the cruise ship through the port, you're going to make a left onto Bay Street. This is the main street in Nassau. And you're going to come to Elizabeth Avenue where you're going to make a right. Walking past the Princess Margaret Hospital, the staircase is going to be directly in front of you and you cannot miss it. It was built in 1783 and is 65 total steps built directly into limestone by slaves simply because they needed something they needed to direct them to do something so they said hey let's build a staircase out of limestone um, so there will be traditionally somebody at the base of their staircase that can give you some of the history of it they're gonna have credentials i don't know if those are true or not but the information normally sounds pretty good that they're giving. Um, there used to be one guy who was there for a long period of time, but unfortunately he passed away. So you're gonna see his memorial um, down at the bottom, but definitely give these guys a chance. Most of the time they can be humorous, they have information, but they are working for tips. So make sure that you do tip them for the information you give them. Walking up the top of the stairs, you're then gonna cut back and around to the right to Finn Castle or Finn Fort. Um, this is a good place. It is a straw market to get some shopping in. Uh, they're going to have some um, coconut water, some different items that you can purchase. And make sure that you're actually paying the admission or the cover charge to go into the fort itself. Now this I think is 2 $3 American. It is not that terribly expensive. You can also pay with Bohemian dollars if you have that, but US dollars works just as well. It is tied. The US dollar, by the way, is tied to the bohemian dollar so whatever the us dollar is the bohemian dollar will be worth the exact same thing so if you do have us that is absolutely fine pay the two or three dollars to get into the castle they'll have a tour guide here as well that can give you um, some history of the castle going up to the second floor and this is a great photo opportunity for the cruise ship so if you're like me and love taking pictures in front of the cruise ship that you're on this is a great place to do it and you're probably going to get three or four of the ships if the trees um, have not grown too terribly much you'll be able to see all of the cruise ships in port so from the castle you're going to go out the back staircase when you walk out of the castle make a right you're going to see a back staircase that's going to cut under this beautiful tree that they have a lot of them in the bahamas so you're going to make a left then onto sands road a right onto East Street and a quick left back onto East Hill Street. So it is a zigzag pattern there. You're going to stay on East Hill Street for a while going up to the government house. This is where their governor general lives. It is a gated off complex, but it is a beautiful pink property. Make sure that you're taking in the views from here, but you're going to see a staircase come up on your right hand side, a concrete staircase. Walk down that staircase walk down the staircase and that's gonna take you to Duke Street. So you're gonna make a left onto Duke Street and just keep walking till you get to the end of Duke Street. Along that journey, you're gonna come up to a statue of Christopher Columbus and you'll also be able to take a picture uh, in front of the government house um, where the gates are gonna be at.
at the end of Duke Street, you're going to cut across onto what is now West Hill Street. And this is going to be where the Gray Cliff property is going to be located. And this is one of my favorite pieces of downtown Nassau. There's going to be a placard of history of Gray Cliff that's going to come up on the left. Make sure that you're reading it to see the full story of Gray Cliff, how it came to be. It is a wonderful story. And you can actually walk behind this placard into the actual building itself. And it feels like you're going to be trapped in time going back to the 1940s, 1950s. It is a beautiful environment, very old school charm, and is a beautiful hotel. If you take in all those views, then walk out the back door, you're going to follow the sidewalk through the back side of the property. This is going to take you through a marble pool, which is absolutely beautiful. If you want to bring a towel, you can certainly do that, and they'll be able to sell you a day pass where you can enjoy the actual pool for the day, and I think you get a drink or two included in your day pass. If you continue on, you're going to go past the Koi Pond, and then you're going to come up to the Humidor Churrasco, which is going to be their cigar shop. So if you go to the left, you can see this building come up on the left. Go up the staircase. That's where the cigar factory is going to be. You'll see the signs for it. Walk all around this small little room. I don't normally see a lot of people in there um, lighting up or smoking cigars, but you are certainly can do that. I'm sure they would actually encourage you to buy one and to smoke it while you're there. They have a small bar if you enjoy um, a drink with your cigar. And you can even walk into the room where the ladies and men are actually rolling those cigars. So it is a really, really neat spot. Again, feels like you're trapped in time a little bit. If you walk back out, there's gonna be a sidewalk on the left-hand side. Follow that up to the Chocolatier. So it is a great spot to, number one, just cool off. It is air conditioned because they don't want their chocolate to melt, but it is a really, really neat spot to see you know, how they're making chocolate in the Bahamas and how they're keeping that cold. I just love the fact that it is chilly in there, especially in the summer. Across the street from the Chocolatier, they're gonna have a wine making shop, so you can actually see how wine is made in the Bahamas. The grapes are of course imported, but they are actually making the wines there. They'll allow you to sample some. They have a little bar you can sample, you can purchase some, and they're also gonna sell fresh smoothies and some conch salads if you wanna take a break or have a refreshment um, snack while you are there. If you go back out to um, the main street, you're going to then make a right and you're going to very quickly see the National Art Museum of the Bahamas come up beside of you on the left. This is a wonderful art museum. I highly encourage it. The entrance is going to be on the right hand side of this building, but it is a $5 admission and I think it is highly worth it. Again, it's going to be air conditioned, so it gets you out of the heat if you're there in summer. But they've done a really good job of mixing the history of the Bahamas, telling the story of the Bahamas, but also bringing in some modern pieces to show how the Bahamas is evolving. And it has some really thought provoking pieces inside of it. I am a huge fan of the National Art Museum. I can't believe it took me so long to go there, but now it's one of my favorite places in downtown Bahamas. What, they also will have a restroom here, so if you need to use the restroom, this is a great spot to um, take a break and use the restroom as well. If you leave the National Art Museum and you're going to go out um, the side entrance, you're going to come up to Delancey Street. So go to the side entrance, make a left, and Delancey Street is going to be right there on the right, and you're going to very quickly see John Watling's brewery or distillery um, come up. Go into the first house and they're going to give you a guided tour, which I highly recommend, of John Watling's. It doesn't take long. I think the total tour is five to ten minutes, talking about the history of Bahamas, of John Watling's, and why they make rum on the Bahamas Island, or on the Bohemian Island. This, again, will you know need to give some tips to your tour guide. They're going to drop you off in the rum store, and I think they actually have some small batches of vodka that they make there as well. And they're going to have a bar that you can try some of the rum that they've made. Now, you can get a flight. They've got a couple of different varieties of that. Or my personal favorite, you can always get their pina colada. Now, it is, is a sweeter pina colada, but it is their selling point. They also may give you um, a sample of the pina colada when you go in on the actual tour to start with. Great place to relax and enjoy. From there, once you leave the John Watlings distillery, make a left back onto Delancey Street, and then you're going to make a right onto August Street. This is going to cut you down to... Uh, Junkano Beach and back to Bay Street where you're going to start to feel like you know a little bit where you're at. You'll be able to see the ships from here. 
Um, if you want to hang out at the beach, they have bars there. They're going to have food. That is an awesome spot. And this is where I like to give people two different options. You can either cut right and head back towards the ship on Bay Street, or if you really want some good, good food and you haven't walked too much, because this is honestly a lot of walking, you can go to the left on Bay Street, so head away from the cruise ships and go down to the fish fry, or the fish fry, as some people call it. All of the restaurants over here are fantastic. Twin Brothers is probably the most popular, um, but I've never had a bad experience at any of the restaurants over at the Fish Fry, and the food is absolutely spectacular. Make sure that you actually get fish at the Fish Fry. Plenty of options over there, conch salad that you can see them make it themselves. It's really, really good, but it is a good bit of walking to get down there and then have to walk back to the ship. I hope this helps you enjoy some of Nassau. Get off the ship, give it a chance, check out what items you like, follow the walking tour, and then at the end of this, the next time you go to Nassau, you may just want to do one or two of these depending on what it is you found that you really liked. Now that you're prepared to go to NASA Bahamas, you know what you're going to do there. Make sure you're heading on over to the playlist for Coco K to see how you need to structure your day, what you need to do at Coco K. There are a ton of things to do on this island, and you want to make sure that you're not hanging out just at NASA and you're prepared there, but that you also know what to do at Coco K. All right, everybody. This is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you on a Weekend Cruise soon.